You're listening to Mentoring Developers. My contention is you can do it no matter where you are in the world. As long as you have a good internet connection, as long as you have a quiet space of study, as long as you're motivated, you can be a software engineer. And if you can't find somebody to hire you, you don't need that to deter you. You can still do something. You can still make websites, put your content out there. You will need to be persistent because one of the things that will stop you is that you will give up. If you don't give up, if you keep doing it, you'll keep learning. Eventually, you will get recognized simply because there are not enough people doing this exact thing that I'm talking about, persevering with maybe writing a blog post, maybe commenting on Stack Overflow, maybe following podcasts and commenting. I don't know. There could be a bunch of things that people can do. But I was wondering if one of the things they could do would be to start a consulting company on their own, maybe as their first job right out of college. Is that a thing? What do you think, Reuven, that that's feasible? People can Look, people can do that. And I think in the world of the web, I, if you've got some experience from college or from high school, that's a thing to do. But I think that it's hard to set like setting up a company, even if it's a consulting company, it's still a company and it's going to be somewhat hard. And you don't want to be learning all the technology and all the business at the same time. So I think, yeah, I mean, it's not a bad idea to have your own consulting company, or your own startup right out of college. But you should, I think, only do that if you've sort of gotten the technical chops already. Um, but, but like, I mean, what I did, sort of waiting two, three years and then starting my own company, in some ways I think that was a very good way to go because I, I had some work experience, some business experience, even though the workplaces where I was uh, were such huge companies and, like, my company is so tiny, it, it, you know, <laughs> in some ways there, were, there was no relationship there. Absolutely. So the advice is if you want to start in software engineering and you don't have a lot of technical experience right now, you have limited experience, try to get that. If you want yes. to work for a, if you want to make an e-commerce website, let's say you want to sell shoes and you want to have a shoes website, then maybe you should get a job in a company that sells shoes, right? And then you'll get to learn how how they are set up what problems they encounter, how they resolve it, and then and then say, okay, now that I have the skills, the business skills, as well as the technical skills, now I can do something on my own. But you, but, but if you start from a blank slate, you could fail. But again, that could be, we have heard a lot of stories about, you know, teenagers starting companies and being successful, but those are, those are rare. Yeah, I think those are those are outliers. By the way, the the only uh, caveat I would have with what you just said about like shoes, for instance, not not to pick on the shoe industry, is you want to make sure that if you have a full time job, that you don't have a, a non compete clause, right? Because if you and and these are ridiculous and stupid, and yet they exist. And some states in the U.S. Uh, outlaw them now. But let's say you work for a shoe company or a shoe e-commerce company, and you decide you're going to go off and start your own shoe e-commerce company, um, they might come after you, uh, whether it's justified or not, and sue you. And um, is, this, is this likely? Probably not. Or right, Paul Graham from Y Combinator basically says, I mean, he says this about patents, but he basically says, if you're small, no one will sue you. And if you're big, everyone will sue you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, it doesn't matter whether it's actually justified or not. Um, when there's something to that. Well, that's a very good point because I completely forgot about this non-compete thing. But obviously, non-compete has a, a time limit, right? It's so maybe for a year, for the next two years at most, they can sue you. But after that, you know, if you've been separated long enough, you would be okay. But then, yeah, you have to go through your contract to see what it says. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening. For show notes and transcripts, visit us at mentoringdevelopers.com.